Welcome to another episode of Ed Luminaries with Alejandra Zertuche, CEO of Enflux, who brings you powerful educator perspectives hailing from all walks of life. Get inspired and obtain great takeaways that you can apply to help set your students up for success. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Alejandra Sertuche and you're listening to the Ed Luminaries podcast, where we talk with educational leaders to find out how they're thinking and working creatively to drive student success. In today's episode, From Spreadsheets to Insights, Revolutionizing Assessment with Analytics, we explore the ways in which analytics are transforming assessment in higher education and how institutions can leverage data to drive informed decision-making and improve student success. Today, we're excited to have Dr. Yolanda Hardy as our guest speaker. Dr. Hardy is the Associate Dean of Academic Affairs, Assessment and Accreditation, and Associate Professor at Palm Beach Atlantic University, Lloyd L. Gregory School of Pharmacy. Prior to her current role, she served as Chair of Pharmacy Practice at Chicago State University College of Pharmacy, she also served on faculty at Northeastern University School of Pharmacy, where she managed clinical pharmacy services with a focus on providing ambulatory care service in diverse and underserved communities. Dr. Hardy holds a Bachelor's of Science in Pharmacy degree from the University of Toledo. She earned a Doctor's of Pharmacy degree at The Ohio State University. Following this, she completed a pharmacy practice residency in community care with the Ohio State University School of Pharmacy and the Columbus Neighborhood Health Centers, Inc. Recently, Dr. Hardy completed a learning analytics graduate certificate program with the University of North Dakota. We are honored to have Dr. Hardy with us today to share her experience on the topic. Welcome, Dr. Hardy, and thank you so much for joining us today to talk about From Spreadsheets to Insights. Thank you. This is an honor, so thank you for the invitation to come speak with you today. The honor is all, all ours. Um, you know, Dr. Hardy, I want to ask you to start the conversation around um, From Spreadsheets to Analytics and how analytics is revolutionizing assessment. Can you tell us a little more about your story, your background, and how you got interested in pharmacy education and assessment? Yeah, so it's really interesting. Um, I have always been interested in education since I was a little girl, and my dad bought me a chalkboard, and I would play school with my stuffed animals. So I always knew that education was going to be a part of my journey. And with pharmacy, just curious about you know, how do medications work? So I was happy to be able to merge the two together um, and go into pharmacy education. When it comes to assessment, I kind of fell into assessment, actually. Um, while I was at Chicago State, um, a colleague of mine and I, we created this really unique taste-based course that was loosely based off of Grey's Anatomy. And the choose your own adventure books, if you remember those from childhood. And so um, we decided after we created the course that we wanted to measure how students performed on the learning objectives of the course. And then also how did the students perceive that the course would prepare them for happy rotations. Um, and so we decided to survey the students after completing the course, as well as survey them again after finishing their last IPPE, which was, um, we had it held like a week before Appy started. And so we were surprised with the outcomes. Um, they are very favorable. Um, and then our dean went on to assess students in terms of how did they perform in this course? And then how did, how did they fare on the NAPLEX? And so talking to the dean at that time, she was like, you know, this is assessment, right? And I had no idea. <laughs> and so for me, that just kind of started me down this path where um, I really started to get excited about how can we use this data to improve not only student education and student learning, how can we help our students become better, but then also how could we use this data to improve our programs? And so since then, it's just been, you know, I've turned into an assessment nerd. <laughs> <laughs> 
It, that's a fascinating story. So as you started doing assessment, just because you were intrigued, trying to figure out like, are we, are we preparing the students, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you were collecting data about how the students were performing in the course. And then the Dean took it to the next level by saying, let's do a, a pretty much a correlation analysis of how they perform in the course and how they're gonna, how they perform on the board exam. Mm -hmm. uh, what were some of the key insights that you found there when you did that relationship between your course and the board exam? Well, certainly the students who performed well in the course, they were performing well passing the NAPLEX the first time. And this was at a time when we were able to get student names, you know, from NAPLEX, yes. which we're not able to do anymore. And so again, those students not only passed in that plex the first time, but they passed it very well. Um, we also saw that those students who felt like they felt confident in the skills. So when we looked at how they rated themselves on the course objectives, the confidence that they had also translated into how they performed on APIs and how they performed on the exam. So um, it was very positive to see that, um, especially since it was a course that, I mean, we we made it up at Panera, you know, so like, <laughs> it was just like, let's see what happens, you know, and it was, you know, just so like innovative at the time to do it. <laughs> that we also were like, we need to collect information to prove that, you know, we should continue doing this. Um, so it was nice to see that outcome. And it was very nice to see how we could take this and really look at student performance almost longitudinally um, and really see what the impact of that course was on student outcomes. And it's a wonderful way to learn about assessment, learning as yes. you're doing it, right? And now, yes. Well, what happened after that, after you learned, you said you became a, an assessment nerd. Yes. Uh, but what does that mean, right? Like, what was the next thing after that, um, after that exercise? Well, I, I started looking for data everywhere. Um, <laughs> and so even while at that school, um, we were working on our accreditation reports for ACPE. And I was the person that's like, where's the data? oh, we have data that can actually support what we just said. Let's go find it. Let's put it together. Oh, this data is telling us something. Here's a gap that maybe we need to address. So I just started looking everywhere for, you know, how can we use data to support what we're doing? How can we use data to say, hey, we're doing a really good job here, but look, there's, a, there's something here that we can do better. And so just, yeah, it just kept on, like it just continued. <laughs> it's a never ending process, right? Once you yes. find some insights, you mm -hmm. become like hung hungry for insights. Yes, hungry right? for insights and just, you know, and in that it takes you down a path where, you know, you're you're now reaching out to people, you know, and getting input from people. You're looking at how things were designed, you know? So it's like, you take this, this piece of insight that you're getting from the data, and then you're like, okay, let me look at the whole picture. The data is giving me a clue, but now I can look at the whole picture to fill in everything else. Um, and, you know, we, we wouldn't have been able to do that if we didn't have the data, if we didn't look at the data, um, and analyze it. And that's, I, I see that happening a lot. It happened to me as well when, when I was working at the pharmacy school. At first, you do one activity, you mm -hmm. show the, the data on spreadsheets, the insights, and people are like, ah, it's that aha moment. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. wow, this is really informative. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then what ends up happening is that people stop making really quick decisions based on intuition. Right. Because they, they, they'll they pause. It's almost like a really quick pause and just say, wait, do we have data? Now yes. they're asking, right? Like, do, do we have data for this? Instead exactly. Of just making a quick decision. Right, um, right. <laughs> what were some, you mentioned accreditation, uh, which accreditation, what we see that happens a lot, and I have talked with a lot of different disciplines, and how they're doing accreditation is that they, it becomes a treasure hunting game. 
Yes. <laughs> um, because you're looking for that data and trying to figure out how do we prove to the accreditors that we're doing a job. It's the evidence. It's not that their people are not doing their job. They're, they're collecting massive amount of data. Mm -hmm. But how do you transform that to a story that you can right. tell the accreditors? Um, yes. What are some of the challenges you have encountered while trying to ensure that your program um, is meeting or exceeding the standards for well, accreditation? Well, the biggest thing, you, you're correct. Pharmacy schools, pretty much any institution, we have a ton of data, you know, and the thing is, is that it's usually not stored in the same location. Um, a lot of times we don't know what all the data is and where it is. And so that that lends to the treasure hunting. And usually you're doing it in a panic <laughs> you know, as you're trying to prepare a report. And so um, I've definitely encountered that as well. And so I think one of the things that I've really made um, kind of as my mission is to make sure that we have an effective and streamlined way to collect the data, but then we also have a repository. So like, this is where everything is, you know, and, um, and I find that that's important. So, you know, someone can come to me and say, hey, do you have data on our class that entered that's going to graduate in 2025? Sure. What do you need to know? You know, oh, well, I want to know. Um, you know, where did they come from? Like, what states are they coming from? Or I need to know what their primary language is. Okay, let me pull that up. You know, whereas before, it's kind of like, hey, who has this information? <laughs> where is it? And how can I find it? And so I think um, definitely as people are preparing for accreditation, you know, the more that you can do to prevent the treasure hunt and the panic that comes to that, the better. <laughs> yeah, the preventing the treasure hunt and the panic, it's mm -hmm. it's a lot better because it it reduces the time you you need to be spending on the process. Exactly. Um, most schools start the self study 18 mm -hmm. months ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um ideally it would be great to still start 18 months ahead of time but start reviewing what you have accomplished instead of spending most of the time on a treasure hunt. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and it's, and it's, it's, we, I was just, I'm speaking to my Dean and a few other of my colleagues about that. It's like, you know, whereas when we had to go through our self-study before part of that time was spent looking for the data, you know, and it's like, we have it, you know, we have it now. Um, we have it in dashboards already. We have it cleaned already. So all it is, is just running it, you know, and, and now we have it and that's going to save us a lot of time than what, you know, what was experienced before, you know, so now you can take that time to really look at the data and say, this is what the data is telling us, you know, this is, you know, we're meeting our targets here because of what the data is telling us. We're meeting our target here, but, you know, We've been meeting the target for the past three years. Maybe we need to up it a little bit and increase our target so that we can strive a little bit higher. You know, and, and those types of conversations are very hard to have when you're spending so much time searching for the data. Um, and so I think that's that's been a trend. It's just having it in one location, streamlining it and making it accessible just will make things a lot easier and, and save a lot of people headaches. <laughs> Save a lot of headaches and, and, and time as well, right? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Because then every time someone has a question doesn't mean that you're crunching numbers in Excel. Exactly. Um, you have everything in one place and probably what you're doing is running queries, like yes. filtering the data. And, right. and that's the goal of having everything in a centralized location. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that way you're spending time identifying patterns and trends that can help right. you identify areas that need attention. Yes. Um, we, I, I, about a couple of weeks, I met with someone that told me, oh my God, I'm spending like more than 80% of my time mm -hmm. just crunching numbers in Excel. Mm -hmm. And then by the time that I'm done, like I'm so tired, my mind is exhausted to even yeah. start looking for patterns or trends. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I, yes, <laughs> I can sympathize because, you know, there, 
that was a lot of the time, you know, when I first started, like, okay, let me crunch all of this in Excel. And then it's like, there are multiple Excel spreadsheets, you know, can I merge these all together, <laughs> you know, and um, being able to share with faculty, you know, can you do me a favor when you send grades, can you make sure every single document has this one column? Because I found a program where if one column is in common, I can merge everything, which mm -hmm. saved a ton of time, you know, so now I can really okay, let me take my time and really look at this. And like you said, see the pattern, see the trends um, versus trying to clean all the data up and match it with the right student and, you know, worry about am I cutting and pasting it incorrectly? <laughs> it's just like, it, you know, those types of things really, um, it, it can take you away from the essence of what you can do with data, so. Absolutely. And how are you like utilizing the recent certificate that you got, the graduate certificate on learning analytics? Mm -hmm. um, how are you utilizing that in analytics to revolutionize the processes that you have in place? Oh, yes. So it's, I loved taking that, <laughs> that program. <laughs> so, I mean, I've done so many things, um, incorporating dashboards, you know, interactive dashboards, because I learned that you know, providing faculty just with a whole bunch of numbers, you know, it's like, okay, you know, I'm checked out, but providing in a way that you can interact with, you know, so it's like, okay, here's our, here's what our students look like, you know, click here and you can see how that's changed over the years. Click here, you can see how our GPAs are. Um, here's our progress. And so that gets the conversation started more. So I learned how to do, create those dashboards in this program, um, learning about responsibility, you know? So a lot of times we're talking about assessment, we're talking about data, um, you know, we're seeing that data is helping us make decisions, but are we making them responsibly? And that's a big thing, um, and of course, we talked about how we could use learning analytics to, um, you know, help identify students that are struggling. But at the same time, if you're consistently giving that student a, a form that says you're not performing in this area and it's highlighted in red, you know, like thinking about what is that doing for the student in terms of their own self-confidence, their mental health, and is that the best way to do it? And so thinking about how we want to use this data responsibly to assist students and not necessarily use the data when we think we're having good intentions, but it's actually harming the student. Um, so we learned a lot about that and just learning about how to use the data to tell the story and how to use the data to, um, to, to add on. You know, and for example, you know, um, yes, we can use this data to say a student with this GPA have has this, you know, possibility of passing an Aplex on time, which is informative. Um, but if we're using data to say, based off of your GPA and your performance in high school, we you can't take this major. So we're just going to steer you away from that major. We want to think about, is that a responsible way to use the data? Um, so yeah, a lot of those things are what we learned in the learning analytics program. Um, even thinking about um, looking at performance based on how we write questions. You know, So do we have a student who, you know, if we look at Bloom's taxonomy, they're getting all of the lower level um, of Bloom's taxonomy questions correct. But when it comes to the analysis and synthesizing, that's what they're not getting correct. So how then are we gonna, um, how will we present a way of helping that student? It's gonna be different than if a student is not doing well on rote memorization, but the analytic analyzing and, and synthesizing the information. So the way that we're helping that student is gonna be different. And so we learned about those things. We learned about using, you know, using our classroom management systems like Canvas or Blackboard 
using it more than just a great book repository, you know, because we can pull data from there. Um, you know, the more students log in, the more likely they're going to perform well in our course. So how can we use that to our advantage to ensure that our students are performing well in our courses? And are there certain things that we can integrate into our courses to, again, help students perform well? So, yeah, we, I mean, it was, it was amazing. So I could probably do a whole other podcast. <laughs> on that. It's really interesting because I really like the concept of um, using the data responsibly um, mm -hmm. because you don't want to, you want to motivate students. Yes. Um, so as you're sharing their, their story, the mm -hmm. data, the story that the data is telling us about them and their performance and mm -hmm. areas of opportunity, mm -hmm. do you share that with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis um, or do you provide a report to them and they interpret on their own? What Can you tell us a little bit more about that interaction with the student? Yes. So um, we use our, we use an, uh, all of our exams are, are electronic. And so with our platform, they, there are those strengths and opportunities report that course coordinators can send out to, um, to the students. When a student comes to me, I pull that out, but then I also go through it. Like, this is what this means, you know? Mm -hmm. So if I'm reading this, this is showing me that you're doing very well on memorization. When it comes to the questions with application, this is where you're struggling. So let's talk about that, you know, and being able to show them that. Um, we I just did a, a simulation NAPLEX exam with our um, P4 students yesterday. And so I'm meeting with them next week and said like, okay, you know, here's your performance. These are the areas that you did well on. These are the areas that, you know, what I want you to look at is, is this what you expected? Do you think you want it to do better? Now, what's your plan? You know, so what do you need to do so that you can improve better in those areas? Um, and so really having that conversation with them, um, just to say like, okay, yes, this is how you did, but this is, this is giving you information that you could use to improve yourself on. Um, and so I don't want them to look at it and say, this is a reflection of who I am, like, and why I'm in a pharmacy school, I can't do it. And being able to help our, our faculty also um, have that same type of conversation is one of the goals that I have for this upcoming year, actually, um, because I also feel like we can use data to help students take more, kind of play a bigger role in their learning. You know, they can advocate for themselves more if, it, if they look at this data sheet and say, okay, these are the areas that I'm doing well on. These are the areas that I want to improve on. Let me think about what I need to do so that I can improve in those areas. More accountability and also <clears throat> an opportunity for the students to own their own journey yes. in the program. Exactly. To, like, because I was going to ask you um, how... Um, how do you make sure faculty follow the same model that they're using data responsibly and telling mm -hmm. the students a good story and not just saying, here's a report card with everything on red? Yeah. Um, how do you get that faculty buy in? And also, how do students, how do you track students? Because the assessment never ends, right. assessment is ongoing. So once mm -hmm. you provided that feedback, yes. how do you, is there a, should there be a mechanism to track the students and to see if they're making progress? Yes. And so in terms of the first question, in terms of getting getting faculty on board, I think definitely um, doing faculty development sessions, you know, and that's an area that um, here we definitely need to work on and improve on. So that's definitely an area of improvement for us, um, you know, because like recognizing that faculty have a lot on their plate too. And it's just like, you know, when you meet with your, your advisees, you know, these are some things that we can talk about. So that's definitely something that's important because you have to change the culture, you know, of your school. Um, in terms of, um, I've just forgot your second question. <laughs> I'm sorry. How do, how do you track the students? Yes. yes. Meaning, how do you, how do you ensure or 
because you need to provide them with constant feedback and said, okay, yes. here's what we told you and share with you and together yes. or by yourself, you came up with a plan of action. Yes. What happened? Let's have a reflection in that. Yes. And, and again, I will go refer back to technology. So we use Influx. <laughs> yeah. And so um, something that we've implemented since the use of it is I go in and look at student performance, not only on individual exams, but their overall performance in all of their courses. And so when we have students who either score less than a 65% on one exam or they're failing a course, um, I reach out to them and, you know, let them know I, you know, I've identified this, come in to meet with me. Um, we also have a learning specialist. Um, and so I let them know that that opportunity is available to them should they want to do that. And then pretty much after that, they're, I watch them. So I look at whether or not their performance is improving in those courses. Are they, in, you know, are they passing future exams? And if I see that they're not, then they get another letter from me. It's like, hey, let's talk, you know, um, and to see what's going on. Um, we also have a program called Pro Mediation, where when students, um, the first time they don't pass a, a, an exam, a major assessment, um, they are, the course coordinator reaches out to them, meets with them and develops a plan for them. And so, um, you know, they're, they're, you know, checking in with their advisor or and their course coordinator on their performance. Talking about streamlining, we're trying to streamline all of that under my office um, because with Influx, I make notes, you know, so here's their action plan, you know, and then I can go in and say, okay, let me check. Let me reach out to that student and see how are they doing on the action plan? Um, and then also because we work with our learning specialist, then I'm able to have that conversation with her on, did the student come to you? What were some of the things that they spoke about as their challenges so that we can make sure um, that we're all working together? It's kind of to use a medical term. It's like a medical home for education. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and so, but we want to, again, make sure that we're streamlining it so that, you know, there's someone that knows, that sees the whole picture with mm -hmm. that student um, instead of everyone kind of working individually. Um, so we're we're doing that now, but the promediation is something that we've done um, for a very long time. And we found using our data, um, we found that with that program, we were able to identify students early on to be able to interact with them and engage in them before it got too late so that mm -hmm. they were able to see what they needed to do to improve so that they could be successful in that program. And so we were able to use what we found in our data um, to say, hey, we're catching students early on, early enough for them to be able to make a turnaround and be successful. And that's the, the whole difference between data and insights. So mm -hmm. data and spreadsheets and insights. Yeah. In order to be for something to be insightful, it has to be on time. Yeah. If you tell the students that they're at risk, mm -hmm. but they don't have a chance to improve performance, meaning maybe they need more than 120 on the final exam because that's right. it, mm -hmm. then that information was not insightful at all. Right. It was just yeah. data. It was yeah. just telling them you're going to fail. Right. Um, so it, it, that's that's why I wanted to have a topic about how do we move from data or spreadsheets to insights. Yes. And Dr. Hardy, what I wanted to ask you is what advice would you give to any program that is looking at implementing data analytics mm -hmm. or insights into their assessment and accreditation processes? Yes, well, definitely do it. I mean, <laughs> I'm biased because I love it, but but definitely do it because it's it is it's something that's manageable. I know sometimes people hear data and they kind of back away from it, um, but don't don't let the data scare you. It is approachable, <laughs> um, and it it can help in so many ways. You know, it can help improve our students. Um, help them learn more, help them become more excited, 
um, about what they're learning and how they're learning. It helps our faculty do a better job in the classroom when they're able to say like, oh, you know, the students are really um, engaged. The students are really learning when I teach this way. Um, but it also overall helps improve your program. So not only are you using the data to look at your programmatic outcomes, you can use it for your strategic planning. You can use it to determine, you know, where are our students coming from? Um, you know, and it it can really be used to, to move your school as a whole to the next level. Um, and so I think it's something that we have to do. And I would say, don't just do it because ACPE or any other accrediting agency is asking for it. Incorporate this to say, this can help our school become better overall. Um, and, and just don't be afraid to dive in. <laughs> That's a great advice. I love it. Um, data can be intimidating, but once you start navigating through it, it's, it, it could be so insightful. Yes. Um, and then you become an, a data nerd like we yeah, are. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> then you won't, every time you want to make a decision, regardless if it's for the program or at a personal level, you're like, where's the data? Let me yes. see the data. Exactly. Um, and make it approachable. Use the visualizations, use the dashboards, you know, show people the story that data is telling you in a way that's approachable, you know, so Showing a table with numbers is one thing, but showing that same table with numbers in a colorful graph that if you click on things change, showing those comparisons or things like that, that's going to get people talking. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Hardy, for joining us today and sharing your experience and insights on, on how to revolutionize assessment with analytics in pharmacy education. Your work at the pharmacy program is truly inspiring, and it's clear that you're making a significant impact on the field. And I'm so happy to share your insights with our listeners. We appreciate your time and expertise, and we know that our listeners will greatly benefit from hearing your perspective. Um, thank you again. <laughs> we hope that you you come back to, to our show on, on a future topic. Maybe we can talk about how to help the students know their story uh, with data. Um, but before we say goodbye, do you have any final thoughts or advice that you would like to share with our listeners? Well, thank you again for this opportunity. I really enjoyed it. And I think what I would like to leave the listeners to, with is, you know, it's data is important. Don't be intimidated by it. Um, make it accessible. And it can be used in so many ways to not only improve student learning, but it can also just help you improve your school and move your school in the direction that you want it to go. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for listening to today's series on Spreadsheets to Insights, Revolutionizing Assessment with Analytics. You can subscribe to our events by going to nflux.com. You can also find us on LinkedIn where we post announcements about our solutions and resources like today's session, I'm Alejandra Sertuche, and you have been listening to Ed Luminaries. You've just listened to Ed Luminaries, inspiring stories and ideas from educators to educators with Alejandra Zertuche. Connect with us at edluminaries.com to join the conversation and access the show notes. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts.